Hey, Asia. Well, I am joined now by J.R. Ron. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of MindMed. J.R., thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome back to the show. What are your goals with the Psychedelic Research Center? Well, thanks for having me back. Uh, this is, you know, it's great to be back to announce really a momentous uh, event in the psychedelic medicine space um, and, and bringing uh, future hope to patients. And so we are partnering with NYU Langone Health, uh, the medical center there, to create a training program um, that is ultimately going to help us to, we believe, deploy psychedelic medicines to patients across the country. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to train more psychiatrists uh, and clinicians um, to, to advance this space. Why did NYU Langone and specifically Grossman School of Medicine make sense as partners for you? Well, we've been working with them for a number of years. My co-founder, Stephen Hurst, uh, had really started working with them on, on one of our drug development programs that's focused on opioid addiction uh, called 18MC. Started working with them, I believe in 2009 um, with the Department of Psychiatry there. Uh, and NYU's really been advancing psychedelic uh, medicine, uh, the research of, of, of these substances as medicines. Uh, you have, uh, Dr. Michael Bogan shoots, uh, and also uh, um, the, the head of the psychiatry department, uh, Dr. Charlie Marmer, really spending a lot of time to bring this into mainstream psychiatry. This was always something that was on the fringes. And we believe that's part of our, the biggest challenge around psychedelics is not necessarily proving the safety and efficacy of these substances, but destigmatizing them to both the psychiatric community and the patients that really need them. Now, you've come on our show before, but for viewers who are not familiar with MindBed, what sorts of drugs are you working with and for what applications? Yeah, so we're working with, with, with substances that sound like the 1960s, um, but frankly, we're never really given a chance. And we think that they have breakthrough potential uh, in terms of helping patients uh, with mental health and addiction. And so we're working on things like LSD and using that in, in LSD or psychedelic assisted therapy uh, for anxiety disorders. We'll be finishing up a phase two study of that that's ongoing right now in Switzerland. And we're hoping to bring that back to the US uh, and furthering that. Uh, in addition, we are working on a, a microdosing of LSD trial, um, which is very popular in Silicon Valley. Uh, I was a former tech uh, executive out there walking the halls of, of some very large tech companies. And there's a lot of people microdosing. And what we wanted to do as a company is actually put some science behind the anecdotal evidence that this could increase focus and achieve flow states. So we're doing a, a LSD microdosing clinical trial for adult ADHD. And then the last uh, pro, yep, sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> the last program that we're, we're working on is, is really addressing the opioid crisis, which costs the country $500 billion a year and uh, we believe we, we want to create effectively the antibiotic of addiction. Now, you mentioned mental health and addiction, and we know that the mental health crisis in the U.S. is actually worsening. The CDC says that now amid the COVID-19 pandemic, some 40 percent of Americans are struggling with mental health or with addiction. At the same time, we are seeing a resurgence of investment and research into psychedelic drugs and therapies. So why is this renaissance happening right now? Well, look, I think any renaissance happens because there is a prior problem. And right now, what we're seeing is really an apocalypse of mental health and addiction. Mental health and addiction are America's unfortunate next great growth story. And I believe that Wall Street and investors have noticed that while well, sitting around in a four wall box for the last uh, six months, that mental health and addiction can have a big impact on society. And so we, we saw with one of our peers that just listed on, on NASDAQ and, and their IPO had you know, very, very successful IPO, Compass Pathways. Uh, and uh, I think the reason is mental health and addiction are very big and vast problems in America right now. And you made a perfect segue because I wanted to talk about Compass Pathways next. Uh, we know MindVent recently applied to uplist to the NASDAQ uh, on the heels of the fact that Compass Pathways just listed on the NASDAQ with this successful IPO. As you mentioned, they raised $127.5 million. How did that successful debut influence your decision to uplist? Well, look, we were the first 
psychedelic medicine company to publicly list. Uh, we did that in March on the senior exchange NEO in Canada. Uh, we also trade in the United States and we, we saw what, what Compass was able to achieve with their IPO and, and their successful uh, fundraise and said, okay, uh, that's the next logical step here. This is going to be, we believe, a very big industry. There's going to be need to be multiple players working on multiple substances. And uh, we have a broad spectrum and pipeline of psychedelic medicines and therapies that we want to advance. We need investors. And what, if any, advantages are there to listing on NASDAQ versus NEO, which is where you're listed now? Well, NEO has been a very, very supportive exchange. Um, I, I think they really took a chance on this space. They were the first ex exchange to do that. Um, but what I think al NASDAQ allows us is we want to start accessing more institutional capital. I think eventually there will be index funds, biotech index funds that start indexing psychedelic medicines. This could be a really big part of how we treat mental health and addiction. And I think a lot of Wall Street investors are saying, I better have this as part of my portfolio. Now we have an election coming up and there are quite a few decriminalization measures hitting ballots locally across the US. As this movement gains steam, how do you think it will impact the future of psychedelic research? Look, I think the story that investors want to back and are backing uh, in Compass Pathways and in MindMed is a story of mental health and addiction and dealing with it in a regulated manner uh, at a federal level. Uh, we still don't have regulated uh, cannabis at a federal level in the United States. We, as a company, we, we don't believe people should go to, to jail for, for a substance uh, that can help them. But at the same time, uh, we really believe that these need to be brought through the FDA. They need to be regulated um, in order for us to adequately reintegrate them into our society. And that's mm -hmm. going to take time. It's going to take clinical trials. But everything that we do, we want to do at a federal legal manner. Right. Well, JR, thank you so much for joining us today. That is JR Ron. He is the co-founder and co-CEO of MindMed.